was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while vision of sugar plums danced in their heads. December is here. It's cold outside and there are twinkly lights in the windows. All the candles are lit and hot chocolates are made. It's the month to bundle up in mountains of jumpers and blankets to rewatch favorite festive movies and read cozy books. But today I would like to invite you to join me on a long, slow decorating and getting into the holiday spirit adventure. This one I mostly use for Christmas. So these are very nice little lanterns from Ikea a few years ago. These little trees that I made. These. These are candles. Uh, some of them I finished, others I haven't. But yeah, look at the big one, it's still full. Oh, that smells amazing. Then we have some other trees that I made uh, seven years ago, actually. <laughs> and yes, apart from candles, these are the decorations that I put around the house, um, on my bookshelf and other surfaces. Almost forgot those bats in the corner. <laughs>
I just sat down, I changed my clothes to something a bit more sparkly and some festive earrings to go through now that it's dark, basically. My book recommendations as well as my TBR for this festive season and my to be watched. Um, so let's get right into it. I haven't read that much festive content. I do remember there are some favorites and classics and some things that I've read recently in the last few years that I really enjoyed. So starting with one middle grade story, which is Mistletoe and Murder by Robin Stevens. So Robin Stevens has written a series of books following these two girls that solve mysteries. They're quite young and then form a little detective society. And this is historical. And Mistletoe and Murder is set during Christmas time when they leave their boarding school to spend Christmas with one of the character's brothers. And he studies in Cambridge. Bridge. So they go to stay there and while that's happening there's a murder so they solve it. It's really fun and if you visited Cambridge especially during Christmas time it has a lot of tidbits and personally I could really see the city unfolding before my eyes while reading this book. So it was really special to do that. I really enjoyed it. The second book I have is the only fantasy I guess and that is Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater. In case you're not really into the whole Christmas festive vibes, but you still want something that makes you feel cold and it's romantic, and in this case, character focused, I would say Shiver is a really good read. I read it a couple months ago. I felt like it was winter. It has really wintry vibes and it's really romantic and sweeping and it's a really slow story so it's very character based. You just spent a lot of time with the characters. There is a little bit of a mystery um, and there is a little bit of urgency. It's beautiful or at least I thought so. I then have a few that I've read a long time ago but the first but a couple of these have been turned into films so you can then afterwards just go watch the film and the first one of those is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. It's a mini series on Netflix and be it the book that I've read years and years ago and the mini series, they're just so fun and lovely and heartwarming. I think I've watched this series like five times at least. It's just compelling and, and relatable. It's so good. But let me tell you what the book is about. I've left some clues for you. If you want them, turn the page. If you don't, put the book back on the shelf, please. So begins the latest whirlwind romance from the bestseller authors of Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Lily has left a red notebook full of challenges on a favorite bookstore shelf, waiting for just the right guy to come along and accept it's theirs. But is Dash that right guy, or are Dash and Lily only destined to trade dares, dreams, and desires in the notebook they pass back and forth at locations across New York. Could their in-person selves possibly connect as well as their notebook versions? Or will they be a comic mismatch of disastrous proportions? So this is the first book in technically a trilogy. I've read the first one and the second. I didn't love the second, so I haven't yet read the third, but the first one is just so lovely. It came out over 10 years ago. So the book may be a little bit not up to date, but the series definitely is up to date and it's really good. Be it reading the book or watching the series, I highly recommend it. I then have Let It Snow, which again, I read this book by John Green, Maureen Johnson, Lauren Miracle, Miracle? A long while ago, I have it in paperback back home, not even here in the UK. It came out in 2008, so definitely over 10 years ago again. But the 
movie that was made in 2019 was really good and I have rewatched it and it's just such a nice story. So technically this follows three stories in one, each written by a different author, but they all connect and they're definitely set in the same universe. Like it's all surrounding the small town and people from one story know people from the other story. This is set at Christmas Eve in a snowstorm that transforms one small town into a romantic haven, the kind you only see in movies. Well, kinda. After all, a cold and wet hike from a stranded train through the middle of nowhere would not normally end up with a delicious kiss from a charming stranger. And no one would think that a trip to the Waffle House through four feet of snow would lead to a love with an old friend. Or that the way back to true love begins with a painful early morning shift at Starbucks. Thanks to three of today's best selling teen authors, the magic of the holidays shines on through these hilarious and charming interconnected tales of love, romance and breathtaking kisses. Oh my god, this synopsis needs work. Three little adventures that are all interconnected and all lead to a romance at the end. They're just really charming and heartwarming. If you don't want to read the book because it's over 10 years old, you always have the movie, which is a pretty good adaptation if I remember correctly. Another story pretty similar to the style of this one is My True Love Gave to Me. Again, a YA romance. In this case, there are 12 holiday stories by 12 different authors and they're all romance. The book is called My True Love Gave to Me and the synopsis says, if you love holiday stories, holiday movies, made up for TV holiday specials, holiday episodes, of your favorite sitcoms, and especially if you love holiday anthologies, you're going to fall in love with My True Love Gave to Me. It tells me nothing. Let's forget this synopsis. So this book was published in 2014, which was about the time I read this book. I can still remember some of the stories. Again, teenager, YA, romance stories, but just it's something, something really nice to have on your bedside table and kind of dip in and out throughout the month. I know a lot of people like to have and anthologies at this time of year because you don't need to be fully reading a book. You can just, when you have an evening off, you can just read that book. In this case, it's 12 stories, so you can read one every other day or spend two days reading one, and that's really not a lot of time. It's not a big book, maybe like 400 pages, so really doable the whole month. Uh, my last YA book recommendation is a book I've read a lot more recently. This book, it has 7,000 ratings and only three and a half stars, but it was published two years ago and I really enjoyed it. It's very much more inclusive than the majority of stories out there that are specifically focused on Christmas. You now are starting to see a lot more, more inclusive stories talking about other holidays or just this time of year in general. But yes, I really enjoyed this one. It's still about Christmas, but it talks about different cultures. Let's read the synopsis. Lila Santos is ready for her last winter break of high school. The snow in her small town of Holly, New York is plentiful. The mood is as cozy as a fuzzy Christmas sweater and she's earning extra cash working at the local inn, AKA the setting of the greatest film of all time, Holiday by the Lake, while moonlighting as an anonymous book blogger. But her perfect holiday plans crash to a halt when her boss's frustratingly cute nephew, Teddy Rivera becomes her co-worker. Lila is a type A. Teddy is a type anything but Lila's way. And the two of them can't stop butting heads over tangled icicle lights and messy gift shop merch. But when they accidentally switch phones one afternoon, they realize they've both been hiding things from each other. Will their secrets and an unexpected snowstorm bring the 
these rivals together. So this kind of happens at the beginning of the book. They've been butting heads and they discover each other's secrets. So they have to keep the secrets safe with each other and work together to, I mean, continue to do whatever they want to do basically. But yeah, it's a really heartwarming story, less predictable and um, cliche as a lot of other YA holiday inspired stories stories. So I really enjoyed this one. And I do recommend it's a really quick read 272 pages. It's not even 300 pages. Then we're moving on to my last four adult holiday romance stories. I mostly have romance recommendations because that's what I love to read at this time of year. Starting with Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayliss. So the original cover of this is terrible. Sorry, but it is true. I've decided to read it on a whim and I loved it. And I thought it deserved so much better. They did since then, I think, redo the cover and it looks so much cuter. I actually, last year, I've read quite a lot of romance, uh, holiday romances. And oh my God, did this one stand out? I give it five stars. I really loved it. I thought it talked about a lot of different topics. The romance itself was good. The setting was whimsical. It was in general an amazing book, but let me read the synopsis. A city bookshop owner heads to the English countryside for a holiday reunion, only to face her childhood enemy. Eleanor Noel, Nori for short, is quite content running her secondhand bookshop in London, forever torn between her working class upbringing and her classmates extravagant lifestyles at the posh private school she attended on scholarship. Nori has finally figured out how to keep both at equal distance. So when two of her oldest friends invite their whole gang to spend the time leading up to their wedding together at the castle near their old school, Nori must prepare herself for an emotionally complicated few days. The reunion brings back fond memories, but also requires Nori to, to dodge an ill-advised former fling. When she falls quite literally into the arms of Isaac, the castle's head gardener, who has nothing but contempt for the snobby prep school kids. The attraction between them is undeniable and as Nori spends more time with Isaac during the wedding festivities she finds herself falling hard for the boy she used to consider an enemy. Nori and Isaac explore their common ground but pressures mount on all sides and Nori must decide what kind of life she wants to live or what sort of love is worth the risk. It really delves into the prejudices on both sides. It's really interesting and then you have Nori stuck in the middle kind of falling in love with Isaac, but also having loved her friends for a long time. An interesting study and it has a happy ending. It's really lovely and it mentions quite a lot of interesting topics. It's really interesting. There's even a little mystery tucked in there, which had an amazing resolution. I really loved this book. It was really a well-rounded story. I really enjoyed it and I recommend it. Now, moving on to another one, another one that came out last year and the author has already come out with another book in this series, Holiday Romance by Catherine Walsh. It has, oh my God, 15,000, 15, almost 16,000 ratings on Goodreads and it has over over four stars. So a lot of people love this story. It follows Molly and Andrew as they're trying to get to Ireland for the holidays. They both live in Chicago, but they're both from Dublin or actually Andrew is from a small town near Dublin. And there's a snowstorm somewhere, so they can't catch their flight to Dublin. And so they decide to catch other flights and go to different places to then eventually arrive in London and then get to Dublin. They always catch up on the airplane about their lives when they're going home for Christmas. 
But this year, with these shenanigans of missing planes, especially because Andrew loves Christmas and he loves visiting his family at Christmas, even though she's not really bothered to go home, she decides to go the extra mile for Andrew and just get him home for Christmas. So they basically go on an adventure to try and get to Ireland in time for Christmas. And it's so fun. It's fun and lovely and heartwarming. I loved it. <laughs> I'm already reading the second one in this little series, which is Snowed In. And it's also pretty amazing. Oh, I remember this one. This was really good. I, last, I read it last year. It came out in 2020, but it's not very well known, probably because the cover is not amazing. It's called All I Want For Christmas by Joanna Bellori, and it's about Nick. He loses his job and is dumped by his glamorous but demanding girlfriend. So he's forced to then accept work as a center for a local Christmas grotto, where he meets Alfie and his mother, Sarah. And Alfie just wants his mother to be happy. So Nick decides to set her up with his best friend because he thinks they might, might be a good match. But actually, throughout all this time, they become friends and he starts falling in love with her. But she's dating his best friend. And it's just such a good story. It's not very well known. It only has 3,000 ratings. But it has four stars in reviews. It was so heartwarming and you felt for Nick so much because you just want them to be a family. Final recommendation is one that was really popular a few years ago. I read it the year after it came out in 2020 and that was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I did hear a few bad reviews about it and it, it is definitely the most popular one with 150 53,000 ratings and it is also the only one with less than a four-star review on Goodreads but it was a nominee for the best romance of 2020 and it follows uh Malin Jones as she's going with her family for their classic Christmas holiday that they always have every year where they meet up with this other family of friends of the family kind of thing they they go to their cabin in a small town and they always spend Christmas with them. They basically don't see them for the whole of the year, but they always spend Christmas with this family. This other family is selling their cabin, I'm pretty sure. So it's going to be their last holiday Christmas all together. And Malin Jones has had a crush on one of the kids of this family. They're two boys and on her side of the family, it's her and her brother. She's always had the cr a crush on the older brother of this other family and she never told him. And she gets stuck in this Groundhog Day situation. The day repeats and repeats and repeats all over again, multiple times. And in this case, it's until she figures out a way to tell this guy that she loves him. As it says here, a gem packed with yuletide cheer, an unforgettable cast of characters and Christina Lawrence trademark hijinks. This swoon worthy romance read will make you believe in the power of wishes and the magic of the holidays. <laughs> it's really good and I kind of want to reread it this year. But yes, let's move on to books that I would eventually like to read. These are mostly classic books. I'm just going to whiz through them. I've never read The Nutcracker. Really want to get that and read it. I've never read How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. And now there's the other one one, which is How the Grinch Lost Christmas. So I would definitely really like to read those two super short books with lovely classic Dr. Seuss illustrations. I would also like to get A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens as I don't have it and I've never read it, but I would like to eventually read the original one because we've all seen many iterations and many adaptations of this story throughout the years. There's also The Twelve Days of Christmas by John Julius Norwich. He's wrote quite interesting little books 
And this one, I've heard it's really funny and it has really nice illustrations. And it's quite short, so I really would like to get to that eventually. Also would like to read The Midwinter Murders by Agatha Christie. There's now a collection of the seasons, so little stories that she wrote that fit within different seasons. I mean, I would like the whole collection, but I would like to ideally read The Midwinter Murders eventually. The last one is not a classic but it's a non-fiction book by Nigel Slater and it is his The Christmas Chronicles. He mostly has kind of recipe books but the way he writes them is very much in um, almost kind of a memoir with recipes and this one in particular, in particular, especially like that. So he talks about his life and his memories and his experiences as well as he shares really cozy recipes and ways to embrace the winter season. I love that. It sounds divine. Those are books that I would like to get and read. But moving on to my TBR books that I actually have. Let's start with the pile in front of me. Yeah, let's start with anthologies. I have had this one since it came out a couple of years ago and I haven't read it yet. I actually started it. I have a bookmark here. I've read 16 pages or 15 pages of this book. And that is The Haunting Season. It's, as I said, an anthology, anthology of stories, which means there's multiple authors, including Bridget Collins, Imogen Hermes Gawar, and a couple of other people as well. As I said, the name is The Haunting Season because it's stories about winter. Winter, with its unsettling blend of the cozy and the sinister, has long been a popular time for a gathering by the bright flame of a candle or the warm crackling of a fire and swapping stories of ghosts and strange happenings. The second one that has just come out, it includes stories by the same people and I think some new ones as well, is The Winter Spirits. Again, uh, wintry stories about hauntings and spirits and ghosts. Uh, really excited to get to these. <laughs> Let's do another anthology. This is a collection of stories collected by Jeanette Winterson. It's called Christmas Days, 12 Stories and 12 Feasts for 12 Days. Basically, it has a story. It has a story and then it has a recipe, Mrs. Winterson's Mint Spies. And it just continues that way. The cover of the stories are dark and then the cover of the recipes are pink. And you technically can read it like one day a story, the other day the recipe, one day a story, the other day the recipe. But you can also, as it says in the title, read story and recipe in one day. I've actually read the start of this book multiple times and I never get through the whole thing. And so the next year I just restarted and I never finish it. But I do just like to have it and bring it out every year. It has a really festive feel to it. I really enjoy it. So yeah, and I love the cover and the back cover. They're really festive. One of my lights just died. Hopefully it's not super dark. The last anthology. I have this little book of classic Christmas crime stories. It was edited and collated by David Stewart Davis. But yes, it has stories by a lot of well-known authors, including Robert Louis Stevenson and Arthur Conan Doyle and Ngayo Marsh. All my, my lights are dying. I'm not even halfway through this thing. Okay, so we're back. I made myself another tea. Weirdly, this year I have quite a bit of mysteries, holiday mysteries, 
that I want to read, even though I'm mostly a romance addict in December. But I did start Tied Up in Tinsel last year by Ngayo Marsh, and I read 143 pages, so I'm halfway through the book, and I never finished it. So I would like to finish this this year, but I do have some other books I want to read. Should give you a synopsis on this, right? So this is a classic manor house in the countryside mystery. It follows a painter, Troy Allen, that comes to stay at, at Halberd's Manor. And the owners of this house, they only hire criminals to work at the house. When there's a murder that happens in the house, obviously all of them become suspects. But you also have some guests saying, and our main character, the painter, is stuck in the middle of all of this. She also has her backstory happening. It's just, it's intriguing. It's quite slow paced. I did find the characters in this book quite endearing to the point where I stopped, obviously. But let me read the small synopsis that we have here. Tied up in tinsel, it's Christmas time in an isolated country house and following a flaming row in the kitchen, there's a murder inside. When a much disliked visiting servant disappears without trace after playing Santa Claus, foul play is at once suspected and foul play it proves to be. Only suspicion falls not on the staff but on the guests. Also an unimpeachably respectable that the very thought of murder in connection with any of them seems almost heresy. When Superintendent Roderick Almy returns unexpected, unexpectedly from a trip to Australia, it is to find his beloved wife in the thick of this intriguing mystery. And yet, so our main character is the wife of this superintendent and he comes in halfway through the book. So technically, we've been following her perspective, but if I remember correctly, we then get his perspective as well. So I'll see. I was really enjoying her perspective. I think that's kind of why I didn't continue because when he came in, it really felt like he was gonna be the main character now. So I got a bit annoyed about it, but I don't remember details. So I'm excited to continue. And then I do have The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding by Agatha Christie, which is just a story set during Christmas time by Agatha Christie. This is a, a bigger book with a lot of story, with a few stories. So this would be a good kind of afternoon read when you don't have anything to do on an afternoon or you want to have a relaxing afternoon, just pick it up and read The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding, which I have no idea what it is about. The last crime slash mystery book that I have here is Murder on the Christmas Express by Alexandra Benedict. So this was a book that came out, I think last year and the paperback just came out this year. Yes, so she came out with a mystery a year for the past three years. The first one was The Christmas Murder, Murder Game, which was very beloved when it came out. And then last year, they then came out with Murder on the Christmas Express, which again was a success. And so the third one that came out this year is The Christmas Jigsaw Murder. All of them sound really good, but this was the one that really got me excited. I really want to get to it, even though I know it's not really historical, which is one of my preferences in terms of mysteries. I am excited to see where it leads me, but let's get to a synopsis. In the early hours of Christmas Eve, the sleeper train to the Highlands is derailed, along with the festive plans of its travelers. But that is only the beginning of their problems, when the body of one of the passengers is discovered in the locked room of her cabin. All the evidence points to murder. With the train stuck in the snow in the middle of nowhere, it's up to former Matt detective Ross Park to find a killer before they strike again. As the countdown to Christmas and their rescue begins, Ross discovers that there are many secret secrets on board this train and many passengers with motives for murder. Oh my god, this sounds good. Wanna get to it? I then have 
five romance stories that I want to read. One of them I have the physical book, the others are on my Kindle. But let's start with the three holidays and a wedding. So there's two perspectives about two childhood friends. About two childhood friends, two perfect strangers and magic in the air. So when strangers Miriam and Anna are seated next to each other on a flight, Miriam traveling to her sister's impromptu wedding and Anna to meet her wealthy boyfriend's parents over the holidays. Neither expect that severe turbulence will scare them into confessing their deepest hopes and fears to one another. Unfortunately, Miriam's lifelong crush, Safe, was sitting two rows behind them and heard it all, including the part where she professed undying love for him. An emergency landing finds Anna, Miriam and Safe snowbound at a quirky hotel in the picture-perfect town of Snowfalls, where fate has Anna's actor crush filming a holiday romance. I've said Miriam this whole time, it's Miriam. Finds the courage to open her heart to safe and Anna feels the magic of an unexpected new love, they might just realize that there's nowhere they'd rather be for the holidays. It sounds intriguing. It sounds good. Hopefully the whole part on the plane will go quickly because I'm a little bit scared of flying myself personally. We'll maybe take it on the plane with me when I go home. Now on to Kindle books. The first one we have is No Dane by Catherine Walsh, which is the, the second one to Holiday Romance that I mentioned earlier, which is about Megan and Christian. Obviously, Megan was a runaway bride and Christian has been alone or in failed relationships for around 10 years and has never really fallen in love. And they both are from the same small town, so they decide to fake date <laughs> to pretend that they're very happy with each other for the holidays and it definitely turns into real love. It's a really nice story, uh, really heartwarming and I'm really enjoying it. Moving on to another one that I want to read and that is Eight Dates and Nights. Two teens with two very different ideas of how to spend Hanukkah learn to work together to save the last Jewish remnant in small town Texas in this cozy holiday romance. New Yorker Hannah Levin is allergic to exactly two things, horses and tinsel. Unfortunately, she's surrounded by both this Hanukkah when, thanks to a freak snow storm, she's stranded in the small town of Rosenberg, Texas, visiting her grandmother, who she hasn't seen in years due to family drama. Super lonely, missing latkes and reliable Wi-Fi, she follows the scent of fried potatoes and wanders into an old deli where she meets the only other Jewish teen in town, Noah, who happens to be equal parts adorable and full of annoying, over-the-top Hanukkah spirit. And he's definitely determined to share that with Hannah. One ugly, itchy Hanukkah sweater at a time. She makes him a deal. She'll help him save his family's deli, which is practically the only Jewish remnant in town that once had a thriving community of European immigrants, if he'll leave her to sulk in peace. However, after a spectacularly memorable case, Hannah wonders if there's more to Hanukkah, this community, and even her grandmother than she thought. I mean, it sounds really good. It came out a month ago and it feels like it's going to combine family drama and family history and cultural heritage as well as a teen romance. And you always need a new teen romance for Christmas. Next one is A December to Remember by Jenny, Jenny Bayliss, the same author as one of my recommendations. She came out with a new book this year, came out around a month ago which is about three bickering half-sisters, one unique antique shop, and the coziest holiday season of their lives. Because I really enjoyed her book from last year, I thought, I'm just gonna read her new one this year, see how it goes. Let me tell you the synopsis. Wildly different half-sisters Maggie, Simone, and Star have hardly seen one another since their sprightly summers at Rowan Thorpe at their eccentric father August's home. 
known for his bustling approach to the knickknack shop he ran. Augustus was loved by all and known by none, even his daughters. Now, years later, the three ex estranged women are called upon for the reading of their father's will and quickly realize he's orchestrated a series of hoops through which they must jump to unlock their inheritance. The last thing any of them want to do. But Maggie and Star desperately need the money, and who would Simone be to resist? Through hilarious goose chases, small town mishaps, and one heartwarming winter solstice celebration, love, hope, and reconciliation is in the air if only the three sisters let themselves grasp it. Sounds good. I do hope there's some romance in there though, because if it's just about reconciliation, lovely, but still, where's my romance? Hoping that this is going to be a good one, but according to reviews, yes, there are not many uh, yet, but they seem to be good. Final book for the romance list. Yes, this is a giant list, a giant TBR. I don't have time to read all these books, I know, but... I'm hoping this CBR would ki will kind of continue into January with the last books I'm gonna mention. But before then, I still have one last romance, and that is Not a Creature Was Purring, which is the fifth in the Paws and Claws mystery series by Krista Davis. I've actually read the second or third book in this series a month ago. So I'm just gonna read the fifth, which is the Christmas one, because I really enjoyed that one and I want to know what's going to be happen happening in Holly Miller's life, which is the main character. So this one, uh, inner, in owner Holly Miller finds it rough staying cheerful over the holidays when the dead body of a beloved businessman turns up in the pet friendly town of Wagtail, Virginia. So inspired by her German heritage, Holly's grandmother has arranged for Wa Wagtail to have a Chris Kindle market packed with goodies and decorations for the holiday tourists. But Holly's mood takes an unseasonable turn when she learns that her old flame and childhood friend Holmes Richardson has brought his fiance home and she'll be staying at the Sugar Maple Inn, which is where the inn that Holly owns with her grandmother. A love triangle becomes the last thing on Holly's mind when her Jack Russell Trixie's nose for trouble leads her to the corpse of a pet clothing tycoon. Now Holly and her dedicated detectives Trixie and Twinkletoes, the cat, must sniff out the killer to keep Christmas from going to the dogs. <laughs> This is a very fun series where it's all about the pets. It is about the relationships and the mystery, but this is a pet friendly town and clearly a pet friend, a pet lover author. I did really like the characters. I want to see what is going to be happening, especially involving Holmes, this uh, old childhood flame. And clearly he's back and still with, with his fiance after three books. I mean, could he have figured out that he is way too friendly to Holly already? It would be nice. I'm really excited to read this book and I'm not even mad that I am skipping a couple of books to get to this. So these are two the two fantasy books that I have on my TBR for this series festive season slash the start of winter. The first one is Upon a Frosted Star. This author has also written Midnight in Everwood, which I have and would like to read, but I'm adding this one to this CBR. They're kind of magical realism slash a light fantasy. I think both are historical. This one has to do with parties, so let's read the synopsis. The invitations always arrive the same way, without warning, appearing around the city on the first snowfall of the year, simply inscribed with tonight. When struggling artist Forster finds an invitation, he's bewitched by the magic of the evening, swept up in the glamour, the glamour of this notorious annual party and intrigued as to who is behind them. Determined to find out more about the mysterious hosts, Forster discovers an abandoned manor, silent with secrets and a cursed woman who is desperate to be free. A bewitching new story inspired by the great Gatsby and Swan Lake. It sounds really good. I actually have read the first page and it's really good. It get it 
has me really intrigued about this story. I do think maybe Mid Midnight in Everwood is more my vibe, but both I'm really excited to get to. So hopefully I'll get to both of them this winter season. And finally, I have a kind of middle grade to YA story, Kieran Millwood Hargrave, which is In the Shadow of the Wolf Queen. I think this is a start of a series, but it's about a Zolda that has lived her whole life in the shadow of the wolf queen's tyrannical rule, but safe in her forest haven, she has never truly felt its threat. Until one day, when a mysterious earthquake shakes the land and her older sister vanishes in its wake. Accompanied by her loyal Seahawk, Nara, Isolde embarks on a desperate rescue mission. But when she is forced to strike a bargain with the Wolf Queen herself, she soon finds herself embroiled in a quest for magic more powerful and more dangerous than she could ever have imagined. So this is the start of an epic new fantasy trilogy packed with thrilling adventure and powerful magic. And I'm really interested to see where it takes us. It sounds whimsical and magical and just atmospheric. So really want to get to this one. And let's be honest, it's not a long book. But yes, that is the end of my TBR and book recommendations and books that I would eventually like to get to. Or just a little roundup of classics to do with Christmas and the holidays. But yeah, I hopefully will see you tomorrow. And I'm going to finish up my Parmesan stars and just gorge on them. I'm so excited for that. See you tomorrow. To make my favorite recipe ever, we have 125 grams of grated hard cheese. I normally use Parmesan and a mixture of pecorino and grana padano. Put the grated cheese in a bowl with 100 grams of plain flour, 2 teaspoons of baking powder and 1 and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika. Rub 100 grams of cold butter into the flour and cheese mixture with your fingertips until the mixture has a crumbly texture. Add two egg yolks and mix with the spoon until combined. Then just roll it out to a thickness of one centimeter. Cut out the stars and Bake the cheese stars at the top of the oven for 8 to 12 minutes until lightly golden on top. to town on these amazing treats. Welcome to the second day of this starter pack. I forgot to show my Christmas mugs yesterday. Um, I don't have many Christmassy mugs and as you know I love my minimal white beige simple mugs. So basically I have three and then a fourth. I actually have three of those but they're personalized so they're 
exactly the same. One is for me, one is for my partner and another one is for my mom, which we keep here when she comes around for Christmas. My The first one I got is this giant one that just says, be merry. Basically my staple 500 ml amazing mug my standard basic everyday 500 ml mug broke last year i'm not gonna say whose fault it was it was definitely not my fault that the mug broke but moving on from that it was my favorite for years and i had to find something to replace it so i got this one which is just a basic mug and then it says be merry on there it's keith brimer jones He's a designer, he does this sort of mug with just the lettering on the front uh, in different sentences and there's different sizes. I really like them, they're really high quality mugs. There's a few like little fun sentences on there that would be really great for someone that matches those vibes. Uh, moving on, I have two that I actually bought this year. This is an amazing, I think it's also 500 mils, like looking at it, it looks pretty much the same size, but this one, I think they're both 500 mil. This one has a little mountainscape in green, and then the bottom actually has a little skiing on the mountain, and it's a Bloomingville mug, really nice and solid. It has, I'm not sure if it's showing very well, maybe the reflection will help show. It's kind of like an organic, look. And then lastly, my favorite mug. It's not 500 mils, which is a surprise for me, but it just feels so nice to hold and drink out of. And that is my snowflake mug by white company it's really lovely it has the really subtle snowflake on there and then the handle oh my god it's so nice like it's thin but not too thin it's just perfect it feels perfect and yeah the white company really love this mug then lastly i have as i was saying my personalized not really like monogrammed mug it's an anthropology one i got it last year but i do they have similar designs every year but last year they had a kind of all white option with just gold initial you'll be seeing it on your screen right now they're really nice but just not the most comfortable to drink out of those are all my christmas mugs i am now really hungry and in desperate need of some caffeine so let's do that see you in a bit There's nothing better than a warm drink and some festive sweet food while decorating the Christmas tree, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. ones I have used as the main star at the top of our natural or tiny trees throughout the years. They're really lovely. After the Harry Potter flying key, we have my loot. This is, I've made most of these. These were laser cut from my times at uni. These I made a few years ago. Obviously there's a whole bunch of stars. And then I think last year I made these leaves which are really lovely. I mostly just hang those up because we don't have a big tree. Under here, where are they? We have my metal bits, circles and triangles that I just hang on the tree for a bit of extra texture, as well as these lovely hexagonal ones. Bought these on Etsy four years ago, I think. 
But yeah, that's about it. These are all of my decorations. I do have a few red ones, which I don't use that often. There's probably half of this I don't actually use on my tree nowadays. They're all really tiny. There's no need to get rid of them, especially the sentimental ones. And the rest will go, go back into the drawer because unfortunately they're just too big for our tree. Our Christmas tree is all beautiful and ready and just messy, but in the nicest way possible. I love it. I thought while we still have light, I would go through uh, activities that I normally love to do this time of year, activities that I want to do this year, and some baking bits that I'm thinking of doing as well. Starting with getting a new pair of pajamas. When I was little, my grandma used to give us a pair of pajamas for Christmas every year. It felt really cozy. It was something to really look forward to. They were always thick, fluffy pajamas. They were always the pajamas that I actually ended up using the most, even if look-wise it wasn't the most trendy and cool. So since moving away and having my own Christmas and, and because my grandma's no longer with us, I have been doing that for myself and requesting as well that other people do it for me. <laughs> So last year and this year we're doing kind of matching pajamas in Christmas Eve boxes, which this year we'll go, we're going to be opening on the 1st of December. But yeah, I think it really just elevates the season because every time you'll use those pajamas from then on, uh, obviously only using around this time of year, you will always be reminded of Christmas's past. So I have at least a couple of pajamas saved and every year I bring them out and they really just put me in the mood for Christmas in my case. For my second activity, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this and that is make sure to save some time and be quite creative with wrapping your presents. Like I love seeing beautiful presents and I love actually wrapping presents, but I hate decorating them. I feel like they always turn out terrible. So every year I get a few supplies and I kind of dedicate an evening to wrapping presents. I just try and see it as a little party for myself. Normally put some Christmas music or Christmas film in the background, uh, I get a warm drink and I have my phone ready with inspiration like video inspiration from a few different 
people and it really helps to feeling less stressed and less pressured and you get to be a bit more creative and have fun with it instead of being like oh my god I want it to be beautiful but I have like half an hour to do all of this even maybe get some snacks I find that it really helps Something that I always love to do, but actually I haven't done that much because I already have some beautiful decorations that I made throughout the years is decorating with natural elements. I used to go out and get some pine cones, sometimes even conkers. I've dried oranges and apples before. If you do have the space and the time, it's so lovely to just take a little bit of it and just make some something nice. Something else really important, it kind of goes back to what I was saying of connecting with nature. Go on a walk, take a steaming cup of hot chocolate or tea, or whatever festive drink, uh, warm cider, mulled wine, eggnog, and just take it on the walk with you. Really feel the cold in your face and touch the trees, connect with nature. I think that's really important. I know how um, stressful this time of year can be for a lot of people, which is why you then end up having a lot of Grinches around. If you take those small steps to really connect with the season and never forget to go see the Christmas lights, be it in a big city, your neighborhood or your small town, you have to have beautiful, lighted and decorated places around you that you can just go on a walk when it gets dark, again, maybe with your warm drink and just look at them. Try and have uh, festive tunes in the background, be it if it's a, a drive or if you're just walking with your buds in, it will definitely help with bringing a bit more happiness into your life. Kind of touching upon that, going to a big city near you, obviously not everyone can do that, but if you can, make that effort because I remember going to London since I moved to the UK, going to London most uh, Decembers and it just, it's that pocket of happiness and like just kind of walking around and the beautiful lights and all the displays that all of these shops go to so much effort to create. If you can't go to something like a big production. A lot of cinemas nowadays do live streaming of these performances, including the Royal Opera House. There, they have a streaming service and they have a lot of ballets there, for example, but including the Nutcracker this December. So I might subscribe to that because obviously I'm not going to London this year, but I can bring a little bit of London into my life here in Norwich. It's a bit like watching a movie and seeing these people going to these amazing performances. But yeah, definitely my favorite thing to do is just to get home, light all the, all the twinkling lights and the candles, get a warm drink and just enjoy, enjoy, be it reading a book or watching something or just having music in the background. Just sit there and enjoy the twinkling lights and the festive period. Try and forget all of the responsibilities, all of the stress of the end of the year. Just take a moment to yourself because that really helps with everything, including seasonal depression. Obviously, never forget to visit Christmas markets. If there's a, one local to you, if you have to go to big cities, try and support local, uh, go to craft markets, because it's really important to help smaller businesses and their owners to also have happy Christmases. Not only do we want it for ourselves, but we should try and give it to others as well. So obviously, so you have, if you have the option to donate or shop local, anything that you could do is already helping someone else. Let's talk about gingerbread and baking. This is the time of year to eat all of the sweets. 
I personally love gingerbread and I really like my gingerbread recipe, the one I use every year. I'll leave my gingerbread recipe below because as I've mentioned already, love gingerbread, really like my recipe. So I will bake it with you in one of the vlogs, but I will leave it linked down below if you want to get a head start, start doing it now. I mean, it's not as if it's a mind-blowing recipe, it's just the Jamie Oliver one, but I, instead of making it, I think, with golden syrup, I always make it with honey. It's really lovely uh, because I normally make it two to three times every end of November to end of December, and sometimes I dip it in chocolate, sometimes I ice it, other times I just leave them as they are. You can always do a gingerbread house or you can get creative and make your own crazy display like your own house or a car. Let your cr creativity flow and do whatever you can. I think it's a bit of a hassle to do a whole gingerbread house or to decide on a display to do every year. Like I've seen people on YouTube making their own houses and things like that. And I'm like, amazing for you, but can I just read a book? So that's why I sometimes don't even ice my cookies. If you want to go all out, I hope to see your amazing displays. But yes, I'm also mentioning gingerbread because last year I saw this recipe of a gingerbread kind of cheesecake cookies and I desperately want to try them. So they're just a gingerbread cookie but then in the middle there's a little scoop of sweetened kind of cheesecake mixture. I want to see if I enjoy that. Another cookie recipe that I actually made like 10 years ago, I made these candy cane cookies and they were delicious. I found another one that I'm going to try this year. We'll see how it goes. There's also these cookie recipes that I found while trying to find these other ones, which they're called like Santa's trash cookies. And they sound so fun. They're like a normal cookie recipe, but then they have chocolate chips, pretzel pieces, and crisps, as well as kind of red and green sprinkles. So they're just a mixture of sweet and salty and sprinkles, I guess. And I think they're gonna be delicious. So I've already bought the ingredients and I think it's gonna be the first recipe I make. Oh, I really love, I'm a fan of the sweet and salty. So we'll see how that goes. The final recipe that I'm gonna leave down below and that I highly recommend are of course, my Parmesan stars. They're technically a baked good. So I'm gonna count it in. They're so, 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 so good. Oh my God, next level. Uh, I normally try and mix like pecorino and just and grana padano. So it's not just Parmesan. There's a little bit of a mix of flavors in there, which is what I do different from the original recipe, as well as adding smoked paprika instead of sweet paprika because it gives it another layer. And oh my God, they are delicious. That's what this time of year is about, isn't it? Showing your baking abilities, but just finishing with activities. It's not every year that we get to have our perfect Christmas. I want to learn to be happier about that. So that's what I'm gonna try and do this year. We'll see how that goes. That's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today on this decorating adventure. I hope you're all in a festive mood now. I can guarantee you that I am. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.